Barbara Repcomley. Welcome to Somerville, everyone. And especially welcome to Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. And now I will take the daring feat of going back more than 200 years in roughly two minutes that I have to open this up. This will be fun. As you may recall, not long after the revolution, Massachusetts became the driving force of the US textile industry. New production systems were created. New workforce was developed. New infrastructure like canals and roadways were built and leveraged. And this all in turn is credited with sparking no less than the industrial revolution. In short, Massachusetts changed lives and the world. Our state put itself on the global map back then thanks to innovation and vision. With the Mass Leads Act, we are now at another such turning point. Thanks to the innovators, researchers, and visionaries connected in the Commonwealth today, and thanks to leader, our leader, Governor Healy, who have the daring, daring to go bold and big on thinking. And boy, does this bill go big. Massachusetts has an opportunity again to change lives and the world. The Mass Leads Act is designed to propel us into the global stage for the most important tech of the coming century. If passed, it will create good jobs and grow our economy. Those phrases might sound abstract, but new jobs and new revenue are how we improve our quality of life. It's how we pay for solutions to tackle our biggest challenges, like affordable housing, or advance our top priorities, like quality education. Progress is all interconnected. If passed, this bill will also advance life-saving work of our thriving life sciences industry, impacting the health of countless people. And if passed, this bill will be a game changer for climate tech, perhaps the most vital industry of our lifetimes. If we want to take on climate change, we have to invest in our innovators, train up a climate tech force, and create an infrastructure with our startups that, who need to scale up and manufacture. If we want to spark the climate revolution, we need full force government investing in and supporting industries that can create change. And that's exactly what this decisive bill is designed to deliver. Here in Somerville, we've seen government partnership and support help tiny startups grow into major employers, producing leading edge solutions. We've seen this work and we're excited this bill will make it possible to partners and to support our climate tech and life science companies as they create and scale here in Somerville and the Commonwealth. So I gotta say, this is not a pro forma event for me. I am truly inspired to know that my state, my governor, and all of you change seekers and change makers helped get us here to this moment we, where we're ready to go bold and big and smart on climate progress, health advances, job creation, and a better future. Thank you again, everyone. And let's give a big round of applause for our governor, Maura Healy. Well, good morning, everyone. It's, it's uh, great to be here. Thank you so much, Mayor Ballantyne, for welcoming us to Somerville, to Ted Wiley and the team at Form Energy. Um, thank you for hosting us in your new headquarters. And uh, we are really, really proud to have you here. We're really, really proud to see the growth and the success of Form Energy. And uh, many thanks to you, 
Ted, where are you? There you are. <laughs> you'll, hear, you'll hear from Ted uh, shortly, but an example of the kinds of entities that we have here in Massachusetts and why we're so psyched about today's announcement, which is about strengthening them, supporting them, and finding ways to harness what is already here in Massachusetts, we just need to give it the love and the support to see it flourish. I want to thank all the business leaders who are here today joining us, who also were instrumental in helping us actually develop and formulate this policy. I also want to um, thank our legislative partners who are here today, our chairs of economic development, Barry Feingold, Jerry Paracella of the Joint Committee on Economic Development and Emerging Technologies, as well as many other colleagues from the legislature. And we look forward to the work together on this uh, bill in particular. Julie Kim is here from Takeda, uh, one of the powerhouse companies that helps make us a world leader in life sciences. They brought their US headquarters right here to Cambridge. Uh, it's so exciting, and we're um, delighted that she's with us today. I'm also joined, of course, by our fabulous Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, who you'll hear from shortly, our Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe, our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, our Secretary of Administration and Finance, the Budget Guy, Matt Gorkowitz, and our Climate Chief, Melissa Hoffer. We also have the benefit of uh, important folks like our acting CEO, Jean LeClaire of the Mass Life Sciences Center, and CEO, Emily Reichert of the Mass Clean Energy Center. Big, big thanks to our economic development team in particular that really went out, did the work, held the sessions, listened, and worked with so many of you to put together this bill that we're really, really proud of today. Uh, all, everybody, all, all of what we call Team Massachusetts in the public and the private sector who helped us. The mayor led us off with a nod to history and who we are, what we represent as a state, where we've been, and, and it is important to remember that. It's important to remember this is in our DNA. What we're proposing to do right now, where we're proposing to go right now, it's something that generations before us have done in Massachusetts, so it's right. Uh, we know this legislation will invest in every sector of our economy to help businesses and workers succeed in every region of our state, now and for a generation to come. You'll hear more about that, but we really leaned into it. And I want to thank so many leaders in the room, uh, particularly as we made sure that we had an equity lens on everything that we do, an equity lens to deal with existing racial and ethnic disparities, an equity lens to deal with geographic disparities across our state, and so much more. But thank you for helping us to make this a better project, pro, uh, product. So we're calling it Mass Leads, right? Mass Leads, um, because it is all about strengthening Massachusetts leadership in the global economy truly in the global economy. And we're excited to share some of the transformational ways we plan to do just that. Let's start with our climate technology initiative. This state is uniquely positioned to lead in this growing industry. We're leading the fight against climate change and public policy. We have the top researchers and innovators in the entire world right here. We have entrepreneurs, including the largest climate tech incubator in North America, Folks realize that, right? Greentown, we stole Emily for a reason. <laughs> Greentown Labs, based right here in Somerville with over 500 startups. We have investors, we have folks who know how to commercialize this technology. We have a world-class talent pool coming through our colleges and universities and apprenticeships in clean energy trades. Um, already, there are over 100,000 clean energy workers in Massachusetts, and that number grows every day. Right now, we have the biggest offshore wind farm in North America, already powering 30,000 homes as we speak. We have communities across the state who are eager for good new jobs and believe in taking action on climate. And when we came into office last year, we said that we believed and we knew that Massachusetts should be the climate innovation lab for the entire world. Massachusetts, right here, we have the power to do just that. And we have the power to do that by investing in this ecosystem and our people. That's what this Mass Leads Act is going to do. If you're an innovator looking to develop your idea, or you're a startup looking to commercialize your technology, this legislation has capital for you. If you're in the offshore wind industry looking to overcome challenges 
and help Massachusetts lengthen our lead, we have a capital program to help do just that. If you're a company looking to deploy technology, to scale up, to expand manufacturing, to hire talent to reach global markets, we've got tax incentives just for you. If you're looking for a great career, a business opportunity, especially if you're from an environmental justice community, we have funding to recruit, to train, to grow, and to diversify the workforce. We see other states competing hard in this space. California, New York, Colorado, Texas, all investing. I want us to win. I want Massachusetts to win. And I know we can win because of the folks I see assembled in this room, representing so many other people and entities out there in our state. We just need to work together. We need to back them up. We need to help them grow. And we need to help them bring their technology across the world. This is a critical mission, we know. Climate change is an existential threat everywhere. And we think about where we could be in five years, 10 years, and beyond. We can be, we can be the place, Massachusetts, to help us meet the moment and what needs doing, not just for our country, but for our globe. That may sound ambitious, but that's what we do in Massachusetts. That's what we're about. So really excited about all the work on our new climate tech initiative and investment. We also have something to turn to. That is a proven homegrown model already of what this can look like. Life sciences. I am proud, Massachusetts, we are the global hub of life sciences. And we are going to continue to be, and we're going to grow that. In our state, we've seen what those investments have meant. Have meant uh, $6 billion in private investment. Think about that. 18 of the 20 biggest life science companies in the world are right here in Massachusetts. We're going to go chase those other two. <laughs> These are companies that today are developing the medicines that are saving lives around the world and elevating our reputation every day, helping to end a pandemic, helping to cure diabetes, Alzheimer's, sickle cell. It's why we won ARPA-H, the national hub of the federal government's medical innovation moonshot. It's why the Mass Leads Act will re-up the Life Sciences Initiative for another decade of global leadership in medical discovery. New areas of focus will be on health equity and so much more. I want to emphasize that uh, when we're talking about um, all of this stuff, um, while it is ambitious what we're putting po forward, it's also realistic. And it's responsible. Uh, it's rooted in sound fiscal management. Remember, capital authorizations, these are not budget. These are capital authorizations that we should draw on because of our excellent bond rating, Massachusetts. The tax incentives are proven to return dollars through economic growth and are tied to getting results. And the operating investments create equitable workforce pipelines that benefit Massachusetts residents. This is fundamentally about recognizing the incredible strengths we have in Massachusetts in every single community. It's about valuing those strengths and investing in those strengths to build a competitive, affordable, and equitable Massachusetts, both today and most importantly, for tomorrow. We look forward to working with the legislature on this. There's so much more to talk about, and to do it is our fabulous Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Governor. Happy Leap Day, everybody. Like a whole extra day. And we're starting it with you. Thank you, Governor, and our team, and everyone who worked on this legislation or helped inform our work with your experience, your expertise. We're so proud to be here and really not only start Leap Day, but think about how these investments are, are going to grow Massachusetts' future. And I certainly look at this always through the lens of a local official. Um, and I want to say thank you for starting the pink trend, Mayor. Pink, <laughs> pink, pink. We all got the memo. When I think about the Mass uh, Leads Act, it, what it would mean to local economies, I'm really excited. Created activity that supports businesses, both small and large, encouraging entrepreneurs, driving that innovation. I think about the local workforce that's going to create, the good job opportunities and careers. While we're here in Somerville, this bill is going to impact all 351 cities and towns in a really positive way. 
I think of our schools, where we're investing big time in K through 12 and career and technical education. We're expanding access to community college and public universities. Well, this is the legislation that's going to create those careers, and those critical industry partners, to, where we need that next generation to grow and ready to thrive in those jobs that will be created by the efforts in this economic development bill. We're also making sure we're investing in the next generation of innovators that are going to help keep this great work going. And it will give us the tools and resources we need to combat climate change locally. That is certainly something that every community is facing across the Commonwealth and beyond. As the Mass Leads Act invests in both local and broad-based economic growth. Things like the Mass Works Infrastructure Grant, the Rural Development Fund, the Seaport Economic Council. It expands workforce training, permitting reform, broadband access. That's the bread and butter of how we actually do this work every day. And it proposes new funding for robotics and advanced manufacturing, turning our innovation leadership into jobs for folks of all backgrounds. We think about this work and we think about hey, what's going to bring us the next form energy, right? We want many more form energies in this commonwealth. We're investing in that as well. It invests in cultural and creative sectors. The third largest industry in Massachusetts is tourism and cultural arts, impacting all of our communities and our quality of life. We want to help grow our tourism, tourism economy and capitalize on our 250th anniversary of the American Revolution. That happened here. Mm -hmm. It will make us a leader in applied AI so that Massachusetts businesses and workers get a competitive edge as artificial intelligence grows. I want to echo the governor's remarks in recognizing the legislature who will be working with. All of our legislative representatives understand the value of making investments that support their downtown centers as well as our large economic urban growth opportunities. And I want to salute the incredible team who put this transformational proposal together. It's been a year of listening and learning and visiting and talking and better understanding how we align a vision for Massachusetts with the work we need to do on the ground. And the person who's been leading that effort, many of you in this room have already met and know, is our incredible Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe, who's going to join us now to offer a few remarks. Thank you so much, LG, and thank you, Governor, and um, especially thank you, Mayor, for hosting us here in Somerville, and thank you, Ted, for hosting us in this awesome new uh, Form Energy headquarters. Um, I am so honored and so excited to be here with all of you today, and I started thinking about how did we get here? How did I get here? And uh, this, this journey started really about a year ago when I stepped into this role in state government. And many of you know, prior to this, I have spent my entire career in business. I've been in big companies like Takeda. I've been in startups like Form Energy. And then I got this amazing opportunity, thanks to the governor and to the lieutenant governor. And one of the first things I learned about a year ago is that in our state, because of our super uh, wicked smart legislators, we have a requirement that once every four years, we have to do a formal economic development plan. And so I said to the governor, lieutenant governor, well, we have this thing where we have to do it. We have a choice. We can kind of check the box, go through the motions, or we can really do it. And you, I think you know these two. <laughs> there was a very clear answer, and so we did it. And we spent a ton of time and did a ton of work. The first thing we did is we put together an economic development planning council of the best, most incredible people from across our state to represent all of our industries. And so many of you are here today, Frank, JD, Brooke, I saw somewhere, um, Tamara. So raise your hand if you're on the economic Devel development planning council. Um, and so I told these folks that, um, and, and Julie was on it, uh, so many, uh, Julie Chen was on it. I told them this is not one of these things where you're just going to put your name on there and just kind of, you know, put on your resume. We're going to actually put you to work. So we put them to work. They did a ton of work. And then we went around the state. So we did nine regional sessions across the state, um, and we were, I was amazed. We had more than 1,300 people from the public, big companies, small companies, communities, come out with all their ideas and their passion and their feedback. And we did, the, for the first time ever, a Spanish language session. Juan Vega from our team hosted that and got input from that important community. And then we did 11 sector-specific deep dives on all of the different parts of our economy, small businesses, tourism, agriculture, education, financial services, and many others. And then across all of this, we focused on the heliogistical priorities, equity, affordability, and competitiveness. And we looked at a ton of data, did a ton of work, and we came up with a plan in, in time for the deadline, which was at December, and we published it. And it's called Team Massachusetts Leading Future Generations. And we called it that because as we did all this work and talked to all of the folks in our community, we realized when we work together, look at this room, when we have the cities and towns and all of our big companies and small companies, investors, our nonprofits, our education, our state government, when we work together as Team Massachusetts, we are unstoppable. 
Not only do we compete, we win. And we've shown that again and again. So we titled it Team Massachusetts, and we titled it Leading Future Generations. And so um, the mayor and the governor, Lieutenant Governor, have, have alluded to this, but we looked at the data, and we've always led. Starting with 250 years ago, we led by throwing some tea in the water, <laughs> led a revolution that became this country. And yesterday, I was at Novo Nordisk. Um, this is a $400 billion market cap Danish company. And they're in the life sciences industry. And they um, have always had their headquarters globally in Denmark, in Copenhagen. And yesterday, they opened up a giant new office here in Lexington, in Massachusetts. And they had an announcement for everybody saying, we are no longer headquartered in Denmark. We now have two global hubs one in Denmark and one here in Massachusetts. And what's amazing about this Danish company, um, I met all the executives, is that when you walk into their office, the whole front is all about Massachusetts inventions and how we've led. They have a Massachusetts sewing machine, the Massachusetts computer, the Massachusetts basketball. So we've led for a long time. And we, and they, these folks know that. And, and, and we know we've led in other ways. The first state to have universal health care, the first state to legalize gay marriage, the first state to figure out COVID vaccines and testing to roll it out. But we all know the world is crazy and unfortunately getting crazier. The country is kind of crazy and getting crazier. Massachusetts, this is not the time to stop. So we've led in the past. We now need to lead for future generations. That's why we call the, the plan Team Massachusetts Leading for Future Generations. Now the plan we're very proud of. And many of you have seen it, 66 pages, lots of pictures and graphs. It's just a piece of paper. Right? So this only becomes um, meaningful for our state if we convert it into a bill, which is why we're so excited to be here today to talk about Mass Leads, our economic development bill. This bill now will have all of the investments, the programs, the specific details, the governance, the infrastructure to bring this plan to life for real for our state. And I'm especially honored to be here to highlight two important parts of the bill, which is life sciences and climate tech. Because in our state, when we lead, we don't lead to make a quick buck. We don't lead because things are easy. We do what JFK says. We lead to solve big, important problems. We lead to do things that are hard. And we are mission driven. We care about making the world a better place. And that is exemplified by life sciences and by climate tech. And so important in this bill are helping companies like Takeda and Form Energy start here, scale here, grow here, and lead by curing disease and making people's lives healthier. So life sciences 3.0 is going to help us do that. And climate tech, this is the existential threat of our time. How do we make sure we protect this planet for our kids and our grandchildren and generations to come? And Form Energy and Climate Tech 1.0 are going to help us do that. So we are so honored and excited now to um, hand this bill over to our legislative friends. And I wanted to say before I close um, a couple of things. One is that I'm a former CFO. So I know firsthand uh, what it's like to try to make payroll. And it's very important for us to be fiscally responsible. This bill, as the governor said, is this is not about expenses. This is a bond bill. These are investments, and investments that will pay off in high ROI ways, just like the Life Sciences 1.0 did. And so we're going to solve these problems, important, meaningful problems for the, the state, the country, and the world. We're going to cure disease. We're going to make the planet better. And we're going to get high returns for our state in terms of lots of jobs created for all kinds of people of all backgrounds, for all of the regions of our state. So this is a high ROI investment that we are making. And last, I just want to say, I want to thank a few folks. One is I want to thank our state government teams. I came into this role a year ago, did not know what to expect. I've worked in many places. We are so lucky in our state. We have wicked smart people in state government. And they work weekends, vacations, late nights, early mornings. And we don't give them fancy bonuses or equity. And so anybody who's on our economic development team or the governor team, governor's team or the ANF team, I just want to, can you raise your hand? Can we just thank this incredible team? And, and the other, the other um, piece of gratitude I want to express is for our legislative partners. Again, I, I'm not from state government. I came in. And I, we are so lucky in our state to have such smart, talented people working so hard every day on our, on our, on our behalf. And um, we're so excited to now continue that partnership by handing over this bill and working together. And I will disagree with the mayor a little bit. She said, if we get the bill passed. When we get this bill passed, we are going to um, make this all come together. So let's go, Team Massachusetts. Let's lead. Thank you so much. Okay, 
Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Ted Wiley. I'm um, one of the co-founders of Form Energy and the president and chief operating officer. Um, I love to be always. I always love to be in a room with Secretary Howe. Thanks for um, <laughs> thanks for that because she just gets me fired up. Uh, you know, it gets me so motivated. And you know, one of the the comments that she made in her speech that really sticks with me is like, all the times that Massachusetts has led. Um, and the reason that that stuck with me is because you could just feel it hearing all the people who, uh, you know, all the incredible, strong, you know, leaders that, um, that spoke right before me. We have amazing leaders. That's why uh, Massachusetts has led. Um, so before I even start uh, talking about form, I just wanted to thank you. Uh, thank you for, for your incredible leadership. Um, it is a real honor to have so many distinguished guests here. And for those of you who are not familiar with Form Energy, um, we started locally and now operate uh, with about 650 people across four states. Um, we're in the process of bringing a pioneering iron air battery system to the market. Uh, these, are, these are big batteries, not what's in your cell phone. This is like a bat <laughs> think battery the size of Gillette Stadium uh, that's designed uh, in order to operate over multiple days to provide uh, you know, stability and reliability to the grid uh, and unlock the power of renewable energy uh, to transform the grid uh, and, and power the grid with, with, with carbon-free electricity. Um, the kind of batteries that enable reliability resilience and that ride through, you know, multiple days of extreme weather, uh, grid outages, or periods of low generation. Um, I'm joined here uh, among others, there's a lot of folks in the form team that I see in the back uh, in the back of the room, which is awesome. Uh, and in particular, I want to call out my co-founders that are in the room: uh, Yet Ming Chang, uh, Billy Woodford, and and Marco Ferrara. And then the the fourth co-founder, Matteo Jaramillo, couldn't make it. He's traveling this week, but he did send his regrets and his regards. Um, we started Form Energy in the coffee shops and restaurants of Central Square. Uh, and then we took our first investment from Katie Ray at the engine, just as the engine was kicking off in 2017. Uh, and so the five of us, you know, have grown to the, the 650 across four states uh, that we see now. Um, we, we started the company uh, operating out of the engine, and we quickly came to the realization that we needed more space and dedicated wet labs. And then we went over to uh, we went over to Greentown Labs, where uh, where Emily Reichert opened us with welcomed us with open arms, um, and that was a, a incredible. It is an incredible asset to to the Massachusetts innovation ecosystem, to have these kinds of places where you can start a company really easy, take an idea and turn it into a reality really easily, um, and that's exactly what we did. Um, You've got brilliant people. You've got a great research environment with universities, a strong investment community, a nexus of other entrepreneurs to share ideas and support each other. And as you just heard about today, we've got a visionary group of government leaders that are willing to make investments in our shared future. Um, we've been expanding since we moved to Somerville. Uh, we, we started you know, in, in a room smaller than this room uh, with, with a, a dozen people. Um, now we have about 95,000 square feet in this building, about half of this building, and then we have uh, three other buildings that we're operating out of uh, in Somerville, one of which is Greentown Labs, by the way. We are still in Greentown Labs uh, with about 50 people there um, because that's such an amazing community and such an amazing place to continue to, uh, to share ideas and, inno and innovate. Um, in, in Massachusetts, we have just over 220 scientists, chemists, engineers, lab technicians. And we're focused on R&D, innovation, continuous learning, improvement, you know, designing the batteries that we're going to build next. Um, we're super happy to be headquartered here in Massachusetts, and we've been intentional about growing here. Um, from day one, Governor Healy's administration and the legislative and local delegations have listened and collaborated on policies that can move our industry forward. And that's, it's exciting to see that, that collaboration culminate in an announcement like is being made today. Um, we can't thank you enough for your leadership uh, and look forward to working with everyone here to pass this bill um, because there are so many great ideas that come from this region and this bill helps ensure that a lot more of those ideas turn into companies that start here, uh, but more importantly, they, they scale here. Uh, they, they grow here, they prove their technology to the world here, and then they stay here. Uh, and that, that is the connective thing that we need. 
uh, we, we already have a lot of great ideas, and now we need to, we need to look to the future and, and continue to turn those ideas into great Massachusetts companies. Um, in particular, I'm really excited about the parts of the bill that support deployment. Uh, because Form Energy is launching our first factory uh, as we speak. We are, we are finishing, putting the finishing touches on the building, uh, and we'll be starting manufacturing in uh, the summer of this year, and then it's time to deploy. Uh, then it's time to put the first huge batteries into the ground and show the world what we can do, and what better place to do that than where we started the company. Um, so that kind, of, uh, you know, that kind of support is gonna be incredibly helpful. Um, so to close out, I, I just wanted to say that, uh, again, thank you to Governor Healy, um, to your administration, uh, to the legislature. Um, and now I'm going to invite Julie Kim from Takeda to give a few remarks. Thank you very much to all of you for being here. All right, there's always a second where you're like, is the tech going to work? <laughs> trying to move away from paper. So thank you, Ted, for hosting the event here and for sharing the exciting work that Form Energy is doing. And to Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Howe, it's, a, it's an honor to be here today and thank you for inviting me to speak. As Secretary Howe mentioned, I had the opportunity to work on the Economic Development Planning Council last year, working with leaders across all sectors to create the framework that the Mass Leads Bill is based on. And so, although I might be a little jet lag this morning because I arrived from Tokyo last night, I wouldn't have missed this event. And I'm really proud to be standing here with you uh, on this day and acknowledging this milestone. Now, in addition to being Leap Day, it's also Rare Disease Day. And Takeda, as well as many of the companies that are based here in the life sciences sector uh, in Massachusetts, focus on rare diseases. And so I just want to say very quickly that there are over 7,000 rare diseases that have been identified today, 95% of which do not have a treatment option available. And so that's part of what drives us to do what we do. For Takeda, our employees come to work every day committed to our purpose of <clears throat> excuse me, better health for people and a brighter future for the world. The Mass Leads Bill will support Takeda and all life sciences companies, big and small, to continue to drive innovation in our sector by discovering and developing medicines, vaccines, and cures for the whole world. The administration is putting a bold stake in the ground about how Massachusetts will lengthen the lead in life sciences and build upon this foundation, as well as invest in other high innovation sectors like climate tech. Now, as I said, our headquarters are in Tokyo, but our global hub is here in Massachusetts. We weren't always the largest life sciences company, but over the past 10 plus years, we intentionally made decisions to build our presence here whether it's through acquisitions, through relocation of our U.S. base of operations, and our R&D resources. Today, our entire value chain can be seen across different areas of the state, from manufacturing to our plasma donation centers, our R&D labs, and our commercial infrastructure. The reason for our investment is simple. There is nowhere else in the United States, or quite frankly, in the world, that has this type of bench to bedside healthcare ecosystem to drive innovation. This environment has raised and will continue to raise the profile of Massachusetts as a world class life sciences hub, which is why companies like Takeda choose Massachusetts and stay in Massachusetts. Part of the success is rooted in the commitment from partners on both public and private sectors to drive this innovation. For the last 16 years, the Massachusetts Life Sciences Initiative and Massachusetts Life Sciences Center have played an integral role in establishing and maintaining our state's leadership in life sciences. It is imperative to continue this important work through Life Sciences 3.0. One example that illustrates the impact of Massachusetts Life Sciences is the Massachusetts Next Generation Initiative, or Mass Next Gen, which is in its sixth year. Takeda is a founding supporter, and the program is paving the way for startups, for companies led by entrepreneurs representing diverse communities in order for them to get the support they need to develop and scale. As we continue to push the scientific frontier, 
we must also unravel decades of health inequities so that every individual can attain their highest level of health, regardless of position or socially determined circumstances. The governor's bill also makes it clear that equity is innovation. So Governor Healy, you've created a winning team. The Mass Leads Bill is a winning playbook for future generations. So we say let's go Team Massachusetts. And Governor <laughs> Healy, back to you. Thank you. Uh, Julie, Ted, thank you uh, to all of, our, all of our speakers and thank you to all who are joining us here today. So as you can tell, we're really excited. Um, we're happy to take questions on topic from here to start. Well, this this investment, remember, it's it's investment. It's not it's not budget. Um, we'll be filing it soon. It's probably going to be it may be upwards of three and a half billion. Three and a half billion. Yep. And is that three and a half over five years? It's ten years. Ten years. ten years. Ten years. Yeah, we're in for the long haul, long investment, right? It's got to be meaningful. So, you know, the idea is um, substantial amount for life sciences reauthorization, substantial amount for climate tech, where we're making a play to be the global hub for climate tech, um, important reauthorizations of some existing programs that do important work throughout communities, um, more, uh, more support for a creative economy, more support for rural economies, um, and, and a variety of other things included in it. We'll let you hear from Secretary Gorkowitz on that. Just paying so, attention to all those things. Um, so we have about a $3, $3 billion, $3.3 .3 billion bond, uh, capital bond program. It's an annual bond cap. Uh, that right now grows by about $125 million a year. Um, and we have uh, factored that growth in over the next five years as we think about our investments in economic development, but not just economic development. We have other bond bills like the IT bond bill and the housing bond bill, and we've uh, incrementally looked at uh, what those increases would look like given our capacity over the next five years. So um, these bond authorizations um, that we're talking about today um, that support climate tech and life sciences are uh, part of our, our future plans, and we believe we have the borrowing to be able to uh, cover uh, a good portion of that. Um, we'll be talking, I think, later uh, this week about the rest of the economic development package, and um, many of those bond authorizations are reauthorizations of existing bonds uh, that we use on a regular uh, basis. So um, there's a little bit of a different flavor of some new authorizations and existing ones, but um, we have uh, factored those into our future borrowing needs. Yeah, and happy to share more details. Um, so one thing that we did is we went back and looked at all of the previous investments we've made and to understand what the math is. And so we looked at the life sciences 1.0 and 2.0 and all of the jobs created, all of the companies started, all of the tax revenues and returns. So we have all of that data and we use that to think about these future, um, future investments. One thing I think that someone in the Globe, uh, I don't know if Rob's here, he asked me, he said, well, all this stuff sounds really like fancy and exciting, but isn't it just all very squishy? And uh, I am anti-squishy. So I'm a business person, so I'm all about having metrics and tracking and dashboards to make sure, this is taxpayer money and we take that very seriously, how are we getting the biggest bang for the buck for these investments? So in our, um, in our plan and now in the bill, for every one of these investments, we have a set of metrics. Now, unlike the private sector, the metrics are more broad. So in the private sector, you're looking at revenue, and you're looking at EBITDA, and, and you're looking at cash flow, and, and um, earnings per share. We have a broader set of metrics here, um, but every one of these initiatives has um, key um, pieces of data that we're going to be tracking to make sure that the investments we make will, will mul multiply in terms of the returns. But we look at broad things. We look at things, for example, not just GDP growth. Um, or GDP growth per capita, we look at things like the Gini coefficient and income inequality. And we look at that by region and by different, um, you know, background, educationally or ethnically. And so we're looking at all this data initiative by initiative to get the biggest bang for the buck. And happy to share more. Governor, you talked about an applied AI hub at mm -hmm. the chamber on Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. yeah. What day is it? <laughs> uh, can you just explain mm -hmm. exactly what that is? Absolutely, and I'm going to invite Secretary Howe up to talk a little bit about that. 
Um, I think about a week or two ago, we, um, I signed an executive order forming a uh, strategic committee uh, and task force on AI. And specifically, what we want to do in this state is lean into applied AI. We want to own applied AI, um, in short. There are other states where AI was essentially developed and, and, and grown. What hasn't happened yet, and the opportunity in the play for Massachusetts, is applied AI, taking AI and then applying it to healthcare, to life sciences, to education, to transportation. You know, so many ways that we can think about not only helping state employees, state agencies do the work and support our workforce. Again, this is to be additive. It's not to take away from the incredible human talent we have in our ranks. Um, it also is going to help us better deliver services to folks in the state. So that's an aspect of it. The other aspect of it that Secretary Howe will speak to, and by the way, this was something that Secretary Howe and our uh, terrific Secretary of Technology Services, Jason Snyder, uh, the two teams worked together on. The other aspect is to, to really lean into this area of investment. So, you know, we are ambitious. Life sciences, climate tech, applied AI, you know, as areas that we're holding up you know, as an administration to say, let's go. These are spaces where we think we can get a great ROI for Massachusetts and its residents. But Secretary Howe, yeah. I invite you to say more. Yeah, no. Uh, we're the composition of the work. Yeah, we're very excited. So um, as we did the work on the economic development plan last year and went around the state and talked to all these different sectors, AI kept coming up. And I think we all realize now, this is not a fad. It's not going to go away. It's not going to be like something. It's going to permeate every part of our economy and every part of our lives. And um, as the governor said, there are different parts of AI. Um, there are parts that, you know, frankly, other states have led on and are probably going to continue to lead on. The chips, the servers, or, you know, AI applied to, like, making haikus for your, you know, family, or, for, you know, AI for, you know, video games or whatever. That's not Massachusetts. Where we want to lead in AI is where we're just in the early innings. We want to lead in AI of solving big, important, hard problems that make the world a better place. That's what we do in Massachusetts. And so this, um, this AI task force is, again, a group of 25 folks from around the state. We have um, all of our academic institutions. We have all of our regions. We have um, you know, companies. And we have, importantly, um, legislators, state government, and city government, all as part of this, uh, this task force. And similar to the Economic Development the Planning Council, we're going to go and pull in lots of other people uh, from all kinds of sectors and on all different topics to make sure that we work together to lead on AI. And so this is not about defense. We're, we're not going to try to put our head in the sand and say, oh, AI is going to go away. How do we, like, protect ourselves? This is about leading and playing offense in smart, ethical, awesome ways to solve big problems. And I think there's really two things we think a lot about. One is that um, for all of our um, leaders already here in our state in education, financial services, life sciences, climate tech, you name it. How do we encourage and help all of our leading institutions accelerate the adoption of AI to solve these big problems better and faster? And there will be a next generation of huge companies that are all going to be, you know, founded in AI. How do we help those startups today, these folks meeting in coffee shops, how do we help them start their company here, scale it here, and become the future giant world leaders from here in Massachusetts. So that's really the goal of the task force. It's a six-month working group. I'm so grateful that Secretary Snyder is going to uh, be co-chairing this together with me. And we are going to come back in six months with a set of concrete recommendations for the governor. And, and hopefully we have the bill passed, which will then have the funding to enable us to bring those uh, recommendations to life and help us lead at AI. Right now there's no investment dollars behind this hub, or, or is there? It's part of the bill. We're working out the fine points on that. I gave you a ballpark figure what this is, but soon we'll be out with, with what the specific amount will be for um, applied, uh, applied AI. But we think it's really exciting. And I think if uh, I'm really proud of this team up here assembled and everyone to a person could articulate the ways in which AI is going to impact the work. If I asked our climate chief, Melissa Hoffer, to come up, she'd tell you about that and, and about the possibilities, you know, with AI. If we had Secretary Kate Walsh here uh, in Health and Human Services, she'd talk about the work and the discussions with people like Val Fleischman at, at Mass Hospital Association. You know, how do we, how do we use AI uh, to better serve patients, right, and, and do the work that we need to do? So um, a shout-out to Northeastern, who currently, you know, right now, it's AI students are working 
working with our Department of Transportation on identifying ways that we can better serve riders with disabilities all through AI. So super exciting stuff um, of all states, Massachusetts, the innovation state that we are, we should be leading and leaning into this area as a driver of economic growth in addition to something that will truly enhance uh, the, the lives of residents in our state. Climate tech companies that started in Massachusetts and you know, have grown here, but then set up major manufacturing operations in other states, including Form Energy in, in West Virginia. Um, are these new incentives meant to keep or bring those sorts of operations here, or is it focused on other parts of the sector? Oh, well, uh, yes, absolutely. We want to keep companies like Form here, expand opportunities for manufacturing. I, I invite Emily, Rebecca, um, Yvonne, or Melissa to speak more to that, but um, the, something that we are very, very focused on is um, both in life sciences and also when it comes to all things climate, the lab to fab model, right? And I think one thing that people really appreciate, and if you talk to CEOs, is the ability for research and innovation to be proximate to manufacturing. It doesn't work in all instances, and there's certain scale that you need, but I think we have an ability to do that in this state. It's why we've hustled and spent time across the state, not just in greater Boston, but across the state looking for opportunities. More work to be done, more work uh, to do and, and that people need to do in partnership with us, uh, because if we're going to talk about what needs doing, you know, Ted will tell you one of the things is where are the utilities on this, okay? Because we need utilities at the table, seizing the moment, helping us, helping them. Am I right? Yes. That's probably the biggest thing. Excellent. You know, Frank will tell you, we're working hard with labor and the trades, you know? We're, you know, this, these, are, these are great careers, great, great jobs. Uh, we've got the workforce, you know? What we need, though, is the actual infrastructure, and we need help building that out and setting that. We need people to get on board and get with the program. Um, anybody else? I was just going to say, so um, I think this is a really important priority for the Economic Development Bill in life sciences and in climate tech. Um, we are so grateful for the, all the success we've had in life sciences and, you know, to become the global epicenter. However, one, thing, one of the things we learned by reflecting back is that we were a little bit late in thinking about how do we not just have the R&D and the science and the innovation, but also all of the biomanufacturing. And those, as the governor mentioned, are really awesome, high-paying jobs that you don't need a college degree, you can get certified, and you can start out making 25 30 40 50 an hour with career paths without a college degree. Um, so we have caught up on life sciences. We now have a huge focus there. We launched the Mass Talent Program under Secretary Jones, um, and we have Pathmaker under Mass Life Sciences, and we now have a bunch of our leading life sciences companies um, expanding biomanufacturing here. So Takeda has done that, but we've had um, Moderna open up biomanufacturing sites, Ultragenics, um, and many others. We are going to learn from that in climate tech. So we are starting off in climate tech by thinking um, intentionally about how we not just have the science and innovation here, but also all of these jobs, which are, again, really awesome, high-paying, mission-driven, great jobs where you don't necessarily need a college degree. And so as you think about offshore wind and the value chain, as you think about batteries and manufacturing, as you think about fusion, all of these jobs are not only um, a diversity of jobs, but also across all of our regions. This climate corridor, these jobs can be you know, near the water for offshore wind, but also all across the state. So we have Commonwealth Fusion expanding their manufacturing to uh, Devons. We have um, other companies expand to Holyoke. And we are going to have form. Form is gonna, we're going to have form expand. And so, um, so this is a big focus of the Economic Development Bill and how we work with companies to make it the right thing for them and for us to not just have their R&D here, but all of these types of jobs here and in all of our regions. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>